Good morning out there in four week natural world. Alex here. Today I'm in Austin, Texas where I'm doing the four week natural and I wanna make a pretty long and in depth video vlog here about the massive mindset shifts that come from going from scarcity and moving to abundance. Uh, the way that looks, the way to do that, the traps you might fall into uh, and some of the, the really monumental hurdles you have to kind of cross to morph completely from a scarcity mindset and a scarcity pattern of behavior into an abundant mindset, an abundant pattern of behavior, and very specifically how that applies to picking up girls. So always here on the start of the, uh, the four-week natural, students come into the program obviously wanting to learn. And here I am in the United States where people are learning pretty much from one big pickup resource uh, that has a very like a, kind of like a driven and intense mindset uh, that's quite specific to learning game. But you can only learn game up until a point that you need to make this massive mindset shift where you go from being a student of the game to being somebody who's like a master of the game and instead of you trying to increase yourself, you need to make this massive shift to being really interested in the people around you, okay? Going from being a student to being a leader. I've got 12 students here on this Austin Four Week Natural Bootcamp. They've all come here to learn about game and to uh, get better with movement, get better at pickup. And unfortunately, here in the United States, one of the biggest companies, they have this whole mindset where they want to kind of keep you on the, the wheel of learning as much game as possible. Whereas my number one mentality is that you are enough. You are enough as you are. There's no reason you're not enough. And you're sound, okay? Problem is, it has made so many of my students addicted to learning and they, they never feel like they can learn everything they ever need to know. And it means that they're really coming from a place of scarcity. They're doing all of their actions and they're trying to pick up women to overcome the idea of not being good at game or overcome the idea of game inferiority or overcoming the idea of I don't want to be lonely, okay? They're the three key driving motivating factors that are playing a huge and dangerous part in defining mindsets and behaviors, right? Here's the thing. What I'm seeing with some of my students, they're very, very competent students. They can yell, they can move, they can express themselves. They are lawyers. I've actually got two guys here who are lawyers and they're very intelligent and educated, quite capable, uh, very good mentally, quite strong emotionally, but all that they're doing, they've learned these skills and this kind of game, this kind of pickup ability, they've learned it from a place to overcome scarcity. And now they've got really good at playing overcome scarcity game, which is a game of control and a game to prove to myself that I'm not gonna be unpopular or I'm not gonna be, uh, I'm not gonna be single or I'm not gonna be shitty at the game. So what the end result is, if you have somebody who maybe hasn't had a lot of friends all of their life or hasn't had a good social group to remind them and tell them how to fit in or how to, uh, you know, how to, to toe the line, how to fit in with the status quo, they're gonna have this almost like monstrous, bastardized game that's gonna be over the top and born out of a place of overcompensating for a lack of feeling like you are enough or a lack of popularity or a lack of abundance with women, right? And that is not good. It's the kind of person who you're trying to get a whole lot of phone numbers and a whole lot of attention and a whole lot of like grab the face, instant make out kind of game, uh, which will really alienate and isolate you from so many people.
So thinking about how to articulate this even more, when somebody's learning gain from a place of scarcity, it's about building external structures and relying on skills and relying on dynamics to work for you to create popularity, to get attention and to make attraction happen. But they're all external things. None of those things are coming from a place of self-trust. They're all coming from a place of creating a dynamic to cause a reaction to work for you, to give you attraction and popularity and a sense of success. So what that, ha what that causes is extreme disagreeability when you are told to learn game from a place of self-trust and a place of giving and loving, right? So here you are, you're learning how to, to, to meet people and to get social skills by using dynamics, force, intent, uh, push-pull and things like that. And then I might come along and say, hey, the way to overcome that plateau and the way to be genuinely popular and genuinely attractive in a way that, in a way that perpetuates itself is actually to have self-trust, be very open-minded, be very accepting, and look upon girls that you're, that you're interested in with love, encouragement, a little bit of trolling, a little bit of playfulness, and, uh, and with sexual interest, okay? And the, the, the shift in that dynamic, as opposed to scarcity thinking, which is, I will do something to cause you to react to me, to like me, the shift is, I will open myself up and share myself with you with the, with the hope that and the faith that you will magnetize towards me, okay? So scarcity thinking and scarcity game and scarcity learning is I wanna cause a control in your reaction towards me, but abundant thinking, natural game and a very giving type of game is I'm gonna make myself available, I'm gonna share positive emotions, I'm gonna encourage you, I'm gonna love upon you, I'm gonna troll you, I'm gonna call you out, I'm gonna give you tough love, and I hope that's gonna bring you towards me. I hope that I'm gonna be magnetically attractive. And absolutely, the second way of doing things, the abundant giving, uh, offering yourself way is infinitely better for picking up chicks because it actually relies on self-trust and magnetism rather than control. That's the big, the two key operative words here, magnetism and versus control. And it's quite, it's, it's even quite hard for me to find the articulation for that because if you haven't been popular all of your life with, with women or with friends or socially, you're trying to gain some control over your social life and your sense of happiness in regards to companionship. But it's a quantum leap. It's a reality apart to say, okay, I'm not gonna try to control the outcome. I'm just gonna hope that I become popular and I'm just gonna hope that people are gonna like me for me, right? Hoping and being open is deeply and universally attractive and pleasant to be around. Trying to control how people react to you and how people regard you is universally unattractive. It's actually repulsive. And this is one of the hugest problems that I have with my students here on any program especially here in the United States where I get a lot of intermediate guys who have learned a lot of skills of control. They've learned good skills of control and they think about the words, the world in terms of control and in terms of if I make a good effort then I'm guaranteed or I'm owed a good reaction and I'm asking you to drop all of that. That brings me to my next point, the emotional episode, okay? Basically crying. I've had a, quite a few guys here on the program already crying because when I ask you to dismantle your dynamics and your understanding of control how you control yourself how you control other people and how you put how you invest into your bank account of control when I ask you to dismantle that entire system and think about the world completely differently all of a sudden you realize that you have nothing you know you know nothing and you don't even know where to begin how to start and you need to call into question your own self-trust, your self-confidence, your core confidence. And that is, of course, extremely difficult to do. All of a sudden I say, hey, simply trust yourself and that's gonna be enough. And it's impossible to believe that. I completely relate to you. It's almost impossible to believe 
that people can like you just by the way that you trust yourself. But think of it from the girl's point of view. Think of it from your own social experience. People who have tried to control you to like them in the past versus people who have not asked you to like them. People who have been open, happy to share themselves, almost innocent, childlike and naive. And they're very, very easy to work with. The kicker here is that you now can become a man who's different to every other man that a girl meets because you're not hoping for a guarantee of she liking you or she paying attention to you. You're not hoping for that. You're giving her every chance, but you're not holding her accountable to it. And you're willing to give her infinite opportunities because you're an open, forgiving, loving, happy person. Sure, have a lot of drive in your your game and your persistence and your reapplication of you know approaching and making efforts for girls. This is not low value stuff because you are enough. All right, let's continue that line of conversation somewhere else. And the next trend of thought is that so many people who are you know, living their life based on proving to themselves that they can get reactions and control reactions and they're coming from a place of scarcity. The next question is gonna be then how do you DHV? How do you demonstrate higher value? How do you demonstrate the attractive parts of your personality? Unfortunately, you, you find, saying. quiet Siri. Unfortunately, you try to demonstrate that by by overtly showing value or intelligence or intensity or physicality or sexuality the things that the game has traditionally said and the problem is that those kind of intense forms of game and social skills they they give you a visual reaction from the people that you you're going to be interacting with and if you can see a visual reaction that's going to egg you on and spur you on to do more of the same kind of thing because you're going to see it. What I'm asking you to do is to play a self-trusting game where you don't have to DHV. The actual answer, the way to get this right, is to go slower, to be patient and to always encourage people to walk away. Like literally say, do not let me stop you, go ahead and take off, I'll speak to you later. That kind of demeanor in the game. And. It's not that that in itself is attractive, it's that everybody else is unattractive, trying to be controlling, trying to be try hard, and really getting upset or emotionally affected if they don't get the attraction, if somebody turns their back on them or if they can't control the situation. So here, you're actually gonna be working on skills of patience, willpower, and trust and faith, right? These are things that are not really easily quantifiable. Patience, will willpower, trust and faith, especially patience towards the front door rule or to create longer interactions. That's the thing that's gonna be attractive, not because the girl's gonna be so attracted to you as a high status kind of person, but because you're gonna build up familiarity, not make any crazy mistakes in the game, and you're gonna create an openness in the interaction. Openness allows for an exchange of emotional communication, for uh, stimulating imagination, for people letting their guards down, for people being able to show their flaws and vulnerabilities. And of course, everybody, once you can be flawed and vulnerable, then you can open up and have intimacy with somebody who you're meeting for the first time. And that's really what you're going for. Remember, the alternative and the wrong way to do it is to demonstrate so much attraction through intensity and push-pull and getting somebody's face and not losing somebody. That's the wrong way to do it. The right way to do it, self-trust, faith, letting them walk away, reapproaching, patience and familiarity two completely different things. But guess what? All of your awareness of how to do things like push-pull, deep behavioral compliments, DHVs, you can still include all of these traditional demonstrations of higher value like money, status, authority, uh, humor, uh, plot lines, or teasing, negs, all that kind of stuff. They work as long as they come from an open place of expression and willing to let somebody walk away and trusting yourself that you're gonna get through to that person eventually because you're never gonna doubt yourself and give up, that's actually the right way to do it. But the good thing is, if you've already learnt all of these game dynamics from a place of a lacking self-trust, then you can apply them when you do have self-trust.
after the gym in front of this Austin tourist destination thing, some graffiti park that's currently all boarded up. But the last thought that we were talking about was was self-trust. Was self-trust, right? And the the huge issue with your thinking is that you're supposed to demonstrate something quantifiable or do something significant to stand out from the other guys, but it's actually a completely deductive thing. It's that there's no reason you're not enough that gives you patience, resilience, calmness under pressure, uh, especially especially patience in I don't care. Do it do what you gotta do. I'm just just blogging. Okay. Yeah. Somebody like pulls up on a scooter and asks me if they they want to break in here. I'm like, yeah, sure. I don't fuck. I don't care. I'm trying to live my life. Um, and it's it's actually a lot easier to perform self trust game because it's lower intensity, lower aggressiveness, lower intent, um, and your trust, that smugness, that you're better than every other guy, that you're more patient than every other guy, that you've got a better resilience to her coming and going, to her tests, to other guys interfering in the set, that you're less shakeable or waveable than so many other guys that you're gonna be next to in the bar or that's gonna be in her life, you're infinitely better. And so your end result is that you can have a slow, steady, bubbly, nice, lovely conversation that includes the things that we, we call them the trinity. This is like a whole new chapter of game that I'm working on. The trinity is basically being very encouraging to the girl in conversation, encouraging her to drink, dance, study, get a drink, um, look beautiful, whatever. Encourage her to, to pursue her career, like all that, that positive vibe. Admiring her sexuality, not in a way that's kind of gamey or trying to trigger a reaction, but just saying that she looks super elegant, that she's the center of attention, that she's incredible company, saying that she's beautiful. And of course, this is not low value stuff if you are enough. And then the third of the trinity is a little bit of trolling, okay? And if you're if you're a high value person and a leader in an interaction, a leader of interactions, it's it's quite good for you to troll, troll a little bit in order to in order to kind of break the ice for people around you, to say that people are funny, silly, uh, unreliable, my friends will hate you, you're crazy. Classic negs. The difference being with this trinity, the sexuality the encouragement and a bit of nagging and trolling, you know, trolling, these things will turn you on and will in turn turn her on. Imagine if you can use sexuality, nagging and encouragement, but not hope that this has made her like you more. That you can just put it out there knowing that these are good social things to do and they're expected of men, expected of people, expected of men, and it's gonna have a positive, a cumulative, po a cumulatively positive effect between you and the chick. You're not asking her to like you because you said it, you're just throwing it out there because you're a generous person, okay? You're a generous person and you know that if you continue to make yourself available, to invite her, to do things, to leave the venue with the girl, uh, to propose, pr <laughs> propose the after party, I've got a dry mouth after the gym, propose the after party, propose uh, getting a bite to eat after the club, propose hanging out one time, you're gonna be very agreeable and easy to go along with as opposed to a whole different type of game that's very asking for acceptance and rejection based on your your abilities and your credibility and your application of game. So here, the way that I'm talking about this, the way the monumental leap that I want you to have is that when you play my kind of slower game, and I, it's not really my kind of game, it's more something that I've observed in human beings since coaching boot camps every week, weekend since 2007, if you play this kind of game, you can actually be attracted to and be into every girl. Basically never reject anybody and for every girl that you meet, if you can get her on social media, every girl that you meet, you can have infinite opportunities to link up with that girl, if not next week, but the week after, the month after, six months down the track. Maybe she's currently dating a guy, maybe she's getting over an ex. But you become exponentially more popular and create this beautiful effect where the girl really fears losing you to other girls, right? If you can be, you know, encouraging, a little sexual, and a little trolling to every single girl that you meet, and you're willing to, you know, ask for the number, ask for the makeout, ask for the date, ask to invite her home for a drink, 
you know, maybe take things all the way in the dating game, which can happen. Um, when you're that kind of positive, open guy, and that girl knows that you're getting attraction from multiple girls, that's when she will really act. That's when you'll actually really get the girl. That's how your game works. When you're, she's going to be reacting out of, out of a fear of loss, admiring you, one, because you're popular, but also really acting on a fear of loss that if she doesn't do something now, she's going to lose you to somebody else. And so, just thinking about the women in my own life, it's honestly, many, many girls will, can be attracted to you, but they won't actually act on that attraction so they know that they might lose you to somebody else. And that is the defining factor. In fact, the students are talking about this now. <laughs> so, there are, some, there are some implementations of the very esoteric idea of trust and, and patience to cause attraction in the pickup game. Living that bike life. I don't know if it's cool, but it's definitely convenient and easy. Just skipping over now to this very famous corner here in Austin on West 6th. Kind of a fancy, classy part of the city, which is nice, nice place to go out. I want to now draw our attention to the huge problem that happens at the beginning of the program and whenever you try to change an important part of your life pretty significantly, there's going to be like car crashes and bike crashes in the background here. Um, and that is the emotional, the emotional outburst, the emotional events that can happen when you need to change significantly. And, basically get told that everything you've ever done hasn't been coming from the right place or has been for the wrong reasons or from the entire wrong paradigm, that can be extremely upsetting. And so to finish off day one of Boy Natural, for the only time on the program we get all the guys in the group, in the program, puppy, we get everyone here together in the, the bar at one time, so we have a little bit of get to know you, these guys don't know each other yet, I get to know them a little bit better, and I get to see you in your natural state, In for me for the first time without any coaching, so it's a little bit fun, like a little bit of a bonus session, and here's all the guys here, you gotta get to know each other. Oh yeah, cameras, <laughs> don't cut that out. And so obviously when the students will come on the program here, they usually have a lot of, uh, I put a lot of energy and effort into making the most of their game, learning from sources online, but all of that game is, it's measured and it's thought of as an incremental progress and a growth. But of course, incremental progress and growth and building structures and building your game and building your competency, that is not a trust type of thing. That is not a, a patience, self-worth, a faith, and showing other people a good time. That's you trying to build a skill set which is structure-based, ego-based, and externally based. And now when I come up, when I come along and I say, hey, uh, you're doing this for the wrong reasons. You're doing this to learn skills to overcome scarcity. God, my, my watch has gone off more today than it's ever gone off. And, <laughs> and, and I ask you to, to take that all apart. All of a sudden you feel extremely vulnerable. You don't know what to do. You don't know why you should be doing it. And if I ask you to trust yourself and have faith in something without evidence for the first time ever, basically to stop believing in, you know, one religion and start believing in another because the other re religion, the religion of structure and game skill, that that isn't anything to be relied upon. If I ask you to get rid of that, all of a sudden, you think that everything that you've ever done doesn't count for anything. But as skills, they do, but the paradigm shift makes you very vulnerable, right? And all of a sudden, you have to relearn and re interpret everything that you know. For example, if a government changes or if there's a military coup or if there's a flood, all of a sudden systems that you used to rely on, ideas that you used to depend upon like water, electricity, governments, public transport, if they all get taken away, if you were to lose your life savings in uh, you know, like a financial crisis, then it's gonna make you very emotional and oftentimes you're gonna have a bit of a breakdown. But, but here's the whole point with learning game and transforming is that if you were to have your systems destroyed, your bank account cleaned out because of an investment problem or a uh, financial crisis, then all of a sudden 
you are able to rebuild yourself from the ground up in a completely new way with good mentorship from, from a position of trust. The financial metaphor is a pretty good thing because with finances, say for example, you lose every single dollar that you have at the age of you know, 30. That's a pretty reasonable age. Maybe you had saved a couple hundred thousand dollars, you put a lot of money into that, into your education, uh, maybe you saved up, maybe you had some assets, and then for some reason you lose something to the tune of you know, $100,000 at the age of 30. I, for one, have definitely been there, right? And this is, we're talking about self-trust and your ability to hustle, make deals, and grow. You don't necessarily need money to go and achieve. You can trust yourself a little bit windy on the tripod here, dramatic weather in Austin. Even if I take all of your resources and structures away and say, okay, now you've got to trust yourself to take this forward, it's your ability to fight fights, be persistent, patient, clear of thought, calm, calm of mind and heart, that's going to make you both successful in life and it's going to make you attracted to other people who do require external pillars to validate them. That's what it is to be a leader. So you're basically becoming, you're in like a, we're in like a windstorm here now. I know the camera's kind of wobbling around, but we'll just go with it. Wobbling around a lot. Uh, now you are going to be the leader unto others. You're not just showing up and demonstrating your self-worth. And that is why I do have quite a few guys crying on programs relatively early on, especially guys who have overcome maybe the most the most scarcity and they need to make the biggest tectonic emotional shift. And that's gonna be a massive, massive shock to the system when I say everything you understand, I want you to reinterpret it because it doesn't work. And that that has been a pretty big, a pretty big thing. To further that, if you build a comfort zone for yourself, show job chode income, chode lifestyle, chode apartment, you can wake up, do a chode job, eat food, get fat, not get laid, feel like you kind of contribute to society because you've got a job and a, you know, you're comfortable, but you're not gonna be happy obviously and you wanna get it. you're gonna wanna get your, your masculinity right and your dating life right. Whoa, we're in a <laughs> we're in a storm here. Um, and it's gonna be very painful to understand that to, to break the comfort zone. Again, it is going to be very painful to break the comfort zone, but the good thing is, in this Western world that you live, this comfortable Western world, you have a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance in your life, your physical life, your emotional life, your professional life. You have chance after chance after chance in a country like the United States or Australia or the UK. You don't so much have a second chance in a place like Bulgaria or Romania or Indonesia or what's a kind of a marginalized country. Uh, at the moment, Venezuela. You know, 20 years ago, Venezuela was, you know, a respectable, medium country. Now it's really, you don't have a second chance in a place like that if you're from, from Venezuela. What I'm saying here is, yeah, you're gonna feel sad and emotional, maybe you'll cry, but you have a million second chances and the whole idea of learning from YouTube or learning from a mentor is that you can make the most of that second chance with guided education, experiences, and all those good things. Well, now I am at the Sony version, because you nice that. I'm surprised how stable this thing really is. Both my legs, both the scooter. Make sure not to hit anything going on underneath me. My head's more wobbly than the camera itself. So I find myself home now, the amazing desk of complexity. I want to wrap up this vlog right now. So it's been an ongoing discussion for the first two weeks of Four Week Natural here in Austin to acknowledge to yourself that the game that you've been learning when you're coming from a place of scarcity is to try to learn a way to control your outcomes. However, this is net thinking. This is, I want to capture somebody with a net, which kind of goes against their willpower. Eventually, you need to realize that you'll get to a social competence and ability to take action, say things, and do things to cause reactions. You'll get to a, a plateau and a threshold and a limit of that. And you've got to realize that you need to let go of that entire paradigm of trying to control results, like capturing results with a net, 
you need to make a shift to become a magnet. You need to let go of that and you need to realize that you are enough and as a magnet, you are enough, people are going to be magnetized to you because you're a quality, competent man talking to women, a single man talking to single women, and you're ticking all the boxes. You're wishing them well, you're sexual, you're taking away, you're creating jealousy by creating many options for yourself. You're creating very, very long interactions where you can reapproach many, many times as opposed to uh, very finite, short interactions where you're asking for acceptance or rejections there at the first instance of your approach. You're making the switch away from that kind of yes or no type of game and now you're playing a game where you can walk into a bar, meet dozens of girls, dozens of women, and maybe if you're going to the same city, if you live in the same city, you go to the same areas almost every week or if you're on Tinder in the same in one area for most of the time, then it's it's really important that you, you have a longevity in your social life where you can meet a lot of people over a longer period of time as opposed to alienating a lot of people. The results will come to you. If you're a magnet, if you are enough, if there's no reason why you're not enough, the results will come. And that's where you, there has to be self-trust. You are allowed to follow up as many times as you like and you are allowed to want and desire these girls. You're not allowed to need them trap them, control them, or or think in that kind of way. As competent as you want to be, you can't think, need, want, or try to trap your results from the women that you're talking to in gaming. Remember, from the four-week natural, I will always teach you that there's no reason you're not enough. That means you, you're okay and you're attractive as you are, right? And then it's all about having your trust reinforced, leading other people to a good time, and that critical trigger that we spoke about in this video is jealousy. Jealousy is the moment where a woman is going to think, that guy is enough, I don't want him to hook up with another woman, I'm going to put my hand on his arm, I'm going for that guy, I hope to keep that guy, and that's where you're going to pick up girls in the most natural, non-alienating, uh, sustainable way of all games that I've ever seen, and I am, as I said, the most experienced pickup coach in the world. So... More vlogs to come. This was a really over-the-top, drawn-out one, I know. Uh, big upgrades in my life here in Austin, Texas, now that I'm back doing the four-week natural full-time. I will be in Amsterdam next. There is going to be a scholarship for one student in Amsterdam, a student between the age of 23 and 26. I'm talking about applications on that on my Facebook group, Four Week Natural World. Um, and then after that, I'm going to be going to Croatia. Spectacular. I'm going to be going to uh, Norway. Fantastic. Going to be going to London. Marvellous, whatever they say in London. And then after that, going to Melbourne by the end of the year. And for your information, after that, I'll be going back to Thailand, where I just come from. We're going to be doing a four-week natural in the first week of January in Thailand. So you might start considering a tropical holiday, CrossFit, Girls Bonds in all of those uh, those locations around the world. Alex from The 4 Week Natural, enjoy this video. Share this video with people who are going out there being creepy and weird and trying to control reactions from girls. And and we had a little metric in our group here, and I said, everybody in The 4 Week Natural, we've got 12 students here and a community of about 15. Can you think of guys in this group who you wouldn't want to come into your set? That's because they've got a bad vibe and they're trying to capture control and aggressively pick up girls, I want you to create a situation where your friends can learn a smooth enough game that you would always be happy for them to come into the, into your sets when you're speaking to girls. Alex from The 4 Week Natural, I've got to get to work editing this thing. Catch you on the next video.